By the year 406 AD, the Roman Empire had been through a lot. Once the undisputed master of the Mediterranean world, they had suffered barbarian invasions, too many civil wars to count, and, oh yeah, the empire had been split in two. But in that year, things were about to get a whole lot worse, because deep within the great Hungarian plain, a man named Attila was born. And he wasn't just some nobody. His uncles, Oktar and Rugilla, reigned together as joint kings of the Huns, and when they died, Attila and his brother Bleda took their place in the year 434. Together, the brothers led the Huns on campaigns against both the Eastern and Western Roman empires, creating a system of tributary states and looting and pillaging as they went, which doesn't paint a very pleasant picture, but it does beg the question, just how bad were Attila and the Huns? Eleven years later, in 445 AD, Bleda died, probably from a bad case of a dagger in the back. But let's back up a little bit to the beginning of Attila and Bleda's rule. The empire they inherited from their uncles had been at war with the Eastern Roman Empire on and off for decades. But one of the brothers' first acts as the new rulers of the Huns was to make peace with the Eastern Roman Emperor, Theodosius II. Admittedly, the Huns demanded a high price, a tribute of 700 pounds of gold to be paid to them annually, but still, it was peace. Short-lived peace, anyway. In 441 AD, the Huns claimed that the Eastern Romans had broken the terms of the treaty by refusing to send them the full amount of tribute. Whether that was true or not is still up for debate, but what happened next is not. Attila and Bleda launched a brutal attack against the Eastern Roman Empire. The Romans were almost completely powerless in the face of the Hunnic invasion. Most of their legions were away in Sicily, preparing to retake the recently lost West Roman province of Africa. And even when some were returned home, it was too little, too late. The Hunnic hordes were already within a day's ride of Constantinople, the Eastern Roman capital, and Emperor Theodosius had little choice but to accept their demands. The Huns returned to the Great Hungarian Plain, and captured Roman soldiers were returned to the Empire, albeit for high ransoms, but the yearly Roman tribute was tripled to 2,100 pounds of gold. Attila wasn't satisfied though, and two years after Blader's death, he invaded the Eastern Roman Empire for a second time. The invasion went really well, for the Huns. For the Eastern Romans, it was hell on earth. Attila lived up to his nickname, the Scourge of God, as he sacked or burnt to the ground over 70 cities across the Balkans before heading further south and invading Greece, reaching as far as Thermopylae. Constantinople itself was just barely saved from Attila's wrath by Roman reinforcements from Anatolia, who repaired the city's walls after they were damaged by an earthquake in the year 447. Now you might rightfully be wondering why the Western Roman Empire was being mostly left alone, as its other half was being ravaged by the Huns. Well, at this point the two sides operated pretty much completely apart from each other. They were effectively two different states, complete with two different emperors. Attila had maintained neutral, arguably even warm, relations with the Western Roman Empire, forging a friendship, or at least a close acquaintance, with a powerful Western general named Flavius Aetius, even as the Huns repeatedly invaded the East. But all that changed when Western Emperor Valentinian III's sister, Honoria, sent her engagement ring to Attila, with a request that he help her get out of an arranged marriage to a Roman aristocrat. Attila, probably wrongly, chose to interpret her message as a proposal and claimed Honoria as his wife, as well as half of the Western Roman Empire as a dowry. Valentinian, to his credit, I suppose, was willing to send Honoria to Attila in exchange for peace, but she quite understandably didn't want to go. More importantly, Valentinian wasn't quite as willing to give up half of his land to Attila. So, naturally, Attila gathered 200,000 of his closest friends and family and invaded Roman Gaul. He was opposed by his old friend General Flavius Aetius, as well as the King of the Goths, a people that had been forced west by Attila's uncles. The combined Romano-Gothic army gave Attila his one and only defeat at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains in 451 AD. The Huns retreated from Gaul, but Attila wasn't quite done yet. The very next year, he invaded Italy, sacking several important cities, including Milan, before being persuaded to leave by Pope Leo I, and, more than likely, a wagon full of gold. Attila died in bed a year later after overexerting himself at a feast. So how bad were Attila and his Huns? Well, they were a people who spent much of their lives invading other people's lands, killing them, and stealing their stuff. They raised cities to the ground just to prove a point, and they left such a fearful impression on the peoples of Europe that some 1500 years after the collapse of their empire, they were still seen as the epitome of savagery. So in that sense, they weren't great. On the other hand, while they were certainly motivated by wealth, they didn't require war to get it, and were willing to accept tribute in exchange for peace. Attila himself was even said to live in modest circumstances, without the fanfare a ruler with that much power in that time would normally demand. Still, the guy murdered his own brother for power. What more do you really need to know? 
Hey, look at that, you made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next one. And, as always, I've been James, and thank you for watching Look Back History.